to it, Lancet Kenya once again on the spot over discordant COVID-19 results. And of course, there were referenced today by Health CS Mutai Kagwe, who said, please avoid, he actually used the word that lab for the time being because of those discordant results. Now joining us is the founder and of course, Group MD, Dr. Ahmed Kalebi, to help us shed a bit of light on what exactly is going on. And Dr. Ari, that's actually my first question. What on earth is going on? Um... <laughs> I'm as confused as you, but uh, I think there's a lot going on. The more important thing, I think there's uh, misinformation out there and people are not understanding the science of the test. And uh, more importantly is uh, when people test positive, uh, I think there's an element of denial and people are looking for negative results uh, and uh, they don't want to accept the results. And as a result, what ends up happening is uh, a lot of confusion out there. Okay. I mean, let's try and get a bit more specific and, and allow you even as you give your responses to use uh, layman's terms as much as you can. In terms of the science of your testing, some are asking tonight, could it be a human error issue? Could there be an issue with your reagents, equipment challenges, poor sample handling, even the methodology that you use as compared with Kemri, for example? Hi. Right. So what I'll say is, uh, in fact, I won't even go too much with the details because... Uh, We've had uh, audits done by the Ministry of Health. I, I presume the Minister of Health has not received the audit report yet, the Cabinet Secretary for Health. But actually, we were audited by the Kenya Medical Laboratory Technologies and Technicians Board on the 1st of July. Uh, and on the, uh, I think, uh, a week before that, we were actually audited by the Medical Council. And they looked into all these aspects that you have mentioned. Of course, human error can lead to results uh, being wrong. You can also have uh, errors because of the machine and reagents if they're of substandard quality, sample handling, but all, are th all these things are things that we have actually looked at keenly in our lab. As you know, we are an international accredited laboratory. Uh, COVID is not the first test that we are doing. We have been doing PCR tests for hundreds of other different uh, uh, organisms and uh, for cancers and the rest. So it's not something new for us. But uh, what has happened is we started doing this test on 1st of uh, April. Mm -hmm. By 5th of April, the government actually approved for us to start doing the test, what we call validation. And thereafter, since that time, we have done more than 25,000 tests. In the beginning, we had a very low positive rate. But right now, with the intensification of the infection, it has gone up. But somehow people are overreacting to, uh, or I, I'll say actually wrongly reacting oh. to the positive results and uh, going to other labs to test, leading to discordant results. Now, when you ask me about discordant results, what we mean is that a test can be positive and then it is tested again and it is, uh, it is repeated again, it's negative or vice versa. And that's where the problem comes in. And there are many explanations for that. Uh, Dr. Ari, I think it's, uh, it would be a bit too light to say people are overreacting. First of all, the Minister for Health himself has today said that he is concerned about that. Uh, he's not just a person. He's the authority in the health ministry as well. But nevertheless, how is it possible that a test at your facility would be positive on a Monday and then three days later is negative at a different facility? Is there any science that can actually explain that? There's a lot of science behind that. In fact, we've even issued a newsletter about this. Let me use a simple analogy. Think about a photo, you know, like your cameraman here has a good camera. You take a picture of somebody's face and they have a pimple on their face. If you take the picture of the face a few days later, the pimple might not be there. It will have disappeared. We know the virus, the shedding period, what you call viral shedding period, lasts for about five days to 14 days, that's on average. But the median period when it's shed is five days. Mm -hmm. By the time someone is coming to do a test, most people are asymptomatic. They are probably coming to do the test as part of their general screening. And when they do the test and it is positive, in our lab, a few days later they go test in another lab, the viral shedding could have been over. That's point number one. Point number two is how the sample is collected. If the sample is not properly collected, and you have seen about uh, on YouTube and the rest how the sample is being collected, you really have to go deep in the nose, at the back of the nose, to get adequate amount of sample. If you don't collect it properly, you will have material without having the viral material or the viral genes that we are testing. The other aspect of it, which is all covered in the report from the medical board, is the test that we do in our laboratory. We test for three genes. The virus has about four genes that we usually test. Mm -hmm. The WHO recommends that a kit should be able to test at least two genes 
our kit tests for three different genes. Now, it, it has been shown from very many studies to actually have a higher sensitivity. What to say higher sensitivity, it can be easily able to pick uh, even the lowest amount of viral RNA. In fact, there are many articles, and one of them is here, and I'll just quickly point out what you call the Journal of Virology. It compared different type of kits, and when it compares these different type of kits, it's actually able to show that some kits actually have a higher sensitivity, and some of the kits which are even used in this country, they can miss up to 23%. But our kit can, has actually 100% clinical sensitivity, and all that has been mentioned. So when you have a test that is more sensitive, mm -hmm. and it can actually pick very low amount of the virus, if somebody tests with that kit, and then later goes and tests with another kit that has less sensitivity, then that, part, that other kit might say it is negative, but in true effect is actually positive. In fact, we have many practical examples, and many doctors can tell you this in this country right now. We have had cases where, for example, somebody tested positive in our lab, goes to another laboratory test negative, but the doctor insists that the person comes back and repeats the test a week later, and they are still positive, and later you find out they have infected some of their relatives, some Dr. people have ended up in ICU or even Dr. So the concern should actually mm -hmm. be so, so I beg your pardon for Whether interrupting you. The false... Okay. Yes. I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Then the question then would be, because a lot of the tests that were done at your facility yes. were then taken to Kemri, the leading research facility in this country. Yes. If we are to buy your view, are yes. you the only one with that testing capability? Yes. And are you possibly suggesting tonight that we should also audit Kemri, for example? First of all, I will say... All the laboratories use kits that are of a particular standard that are acceptable. But there might be small differences between different kits. Mm -hmm. And those small differences have actually been shown can make an impact in terms of the re results. And actually, the audit that was done in our laboratory was done by Professor Matilu and uh, the chairman of the Kenya Association of Clinical Pathologists, and they actually noted the differences in these kits. The kits we are using was the first commercial kit used in the world. That is from South Korea. It's called Seijin. And it has actually been shown to actually have a higher sensitivity. The whole point is this. In some instances, you can actually have a scenario where other kits can miss what is positive, mm -hmm. yet is actually truly positive. So people should be actually concerned about false negative results rather than false positive results. Because even for us, I'll give you a simple example. Sometimes back, about a month or so ago, we had somebody who had tested positive in one of the government hospitals, tested negative in our laboratory, uh, like a few days later, like uh, five days later. And we actually told the patient, you go by that positive result. Because several things can happen in between when you collect different samples, and also false negative are very common. That's why WHO says if somebody tests negative, it does not exclude COVID. But if somebody tests positive, it actually confirms COVID. In the case of the St. Andrew Turi case, what happened is they tested not three days later. They got their results, which was about two days later, and then tested about three days later, which okay. was almost five days. That in itself can also explain why you have discordant results. Dr. Galebi, this really is quite strange. But finally, uh, tell me this if you can briefly. Then the bigger concern for many Kenyans would be tonight, do we really know how many Kenyans have COVID-19? Do we really know who is positive and negative? There might be people watching this program tonight who might have tested positive at, their fa at your facility. They're not sure now if they are. Or they tested negative in another facility, but they're not sure they really are negative. What I can say categorically is, any test done by any laboratory in this country or anywhere for that matter, if it is positive, it indicates a true positive. Because this test is PCR, it is highly specific. However, if it is negative, it doesn't exclude COVID. And that's why this whole business of saying COVID-free certificate, for lack of better words, is complete nonsense. There's nothing called COVID-free certificate because you can be negative at this point, but actually it's a false negative. It just depends on how, how much virus is being shed. You know a very simple example, malaria. If you go test for malaria, you might test negative, but you're still feeling sick. You go back and test again, and you might have to, 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 actually have to be tested about two, three, four times before it confirms. So the concern should be how many people are out there who have tested negative, yet they are positive and they go infecting other people. Okay. And we have many examples like that. That okay. should be the concern.
Dr. Kalebi, a real concern tonight. Thank you so much for agreeing to speak with us uh, just a couple of hours after concerns were raised about the testing uh, capability at your facility. And, and I believe our viewers have had a little bit of your defense. And just to mention, uh, Waika, matter. just to confirm, it, it has been really short then. already from the, from the medical board. Sorry, say that again. There is actually a report from the Medical Practitioner and Dentist Council, which has been tabled to the Ministry of Health. And there is a second report from the Kenya Medical Laboratory Technologies and Technicians Board, which has also been tabled. I've not seen that report yet, but I can tell you uh, we have nothing to hide uh, Yeah. You have nothing to hide. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Kalebi, he is the uh, group MD and the founder of the Lancet Group of Laboratories, just trying to shed light on why we are seeing uh, discordant test results uh, specifically from his facility at a time like this, and it's even raised uh, the attention of the ministry.